many people are starting their careers on YouTube, which is an absolutely wonderful thing to do. However, it does propose a question whether a career on YouTube is becoming inaccessible. Let's look at the reasons as to why it might be inaccessible. With the first point being that there is a high expectation of quality production. So if an individual has a DSLR camera, a good microphone, good video editing skills, they will put all of that together and create something quite visually pleasing. But then for someone who is recording on the laptop web camera with a university accommodation lighting, so with the yellow light, and they just upload it without any video editing, they won't get as much attention as someone who's put in the time and effort to actually create something that is visually pleasing. Makes sense, you know, the more effort you put in, the greater the return. However, at the same time, it's making me think that are we judging a book by its cover? So the content that is being produced by someone using a laptop web camera, they might be producing something quite valuable, but we're not looking at it because of how visually not good it looks. But then for someone who is, you know, putting the time and effort into creating something and because it looks visually pleasing, we'll, we're more likely to click on it and watch the entire video. And I say this is slightly inaccessible in the sense that, you know, a DSLR camera, lights, microphones, they're not cheap stuff, they're relatively expensive. And so it just means that because of this expectation that you need all of this sort of stuff, it becomes harder to even start up a career, especially if, you know, finances are not necessarily supporting you right now. So in this situation is relatively hard and I feel like there should be, you know, a little bit more attention to videos that might not look visually pleasing because I feel like we're very quick to judge. And I've experienced that in the past that I might have an, a subconscious prejudgment of someone, but when I get to speak to them, that prejudgment disappears. And in fact, I'm very well impressed. And this is a very human nature like thing to do. So maybe we should actually be paying attention to the videos that aren't, you know, as visually pleasing. But then at the same time, there is the issue of the YouTube algorithm and promoting, you know, more popular videos. But then I guess in order to see the unpopular videos, we'd have to manually change that in the settings and look at the recently uploaded videos. Point number two is the saturation of the market. And this is kind of a weaker argument, but because of how many videos there are within each sector, like let's say YouTuber medics, medical school, cooking, um, you know, South Asian cooking, th there are so many YouTubers and to start up a YouTube career or to start up a YouTube channel that focuses in any one of these, you know, fields and to actually gain attention is relatively quite hard. But then at the same time, the reason why this might be a weaker argument for me is because I'm uploading literally to share my passion and to share things that I enjoy doing. I think that's my main focus rather than, you know, being overly obsessed about subscribers. And I'm not saying that this is the case with everyone, but I've also fallen into the trap of, oh, I need 10,000 subscribers. But if those 10,000 subscribers won't necessarily interact with me and, you know, they don't watch my videos, What's the point of having 10,000 subscribers? I don't know if that makes sense. And point number three is the YouTube algorithm itself. I'll be very honest with you. I've heard this phrase and term so often and I've never actually looked it up. But all I know is that certain videos are promoted, certain videos aren't promoted for a variety of reasons. And because of the frequency it changes, I'm like, how do I even know what the algorithm is? It can either support you and be at your advantage, or it can either not support you and be at your disadvantage. And so because of that, it becomes quite inaccessible unless, you know, you actually do deeper research and reading into it, which now saying that I probably should. However, I've mentioned about the inaccessibility of, you know, YouTube. Let's talk about why it might be accessible. Anyone with a Gmail account can start a YouTube channel. Probably takes under five minutes to start up a YouTube channel quick and easy. Get your phone, which pretty much nearly everyone in, a wo in the world right now has some sort of smartphone, and they can just record with their camera and just upload. So in that sense, it's quite accessible and it's so easy and quick to do. There are multiple ways of being monetized on YouTube. So rather than just being paid, you know, for the number of views that you get, there is, you know, merchandise, there is, you know, the YouTube shop, there's, um, you can sell products on there. There's a whole variety of different things. 
and different ways in which someone can be paid. And point number three, which I think is relatively important, that there is an increasing number of people on YouTube in the sense of viewers. And so even though when I previously mentioned that, you know, the market is fully saturated, yes, for video creators. However, we've also got to think about the number of audience as well in terms of that that is exponentially increasing. And so you have a greater chance of interacting and getting support from the community. So overall, I feel like I'm sat in the middle in terms of whether YouTube is inaccessible or whether it is accessible. Tell me what you guys think. By the way, I've recorded this like three times and I need the toilet, which is why the ending might be a little bit abrupt. But anyways, 